YouTube. So it's Saturday, January the 9th, 2021. What's going on? What's popping? Oh, so this is just a little bitty video where it's pro probably a long video. However, um, tonight we will have our first sip and craft for my crafting group, Cricket Crafting dot 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 the beginning and beyond. If you haven't already, go ahead and um, join the group. The link is in the description. We're going to have a good time. We do this every other Saturday at 8 p.m. And this is my personal invitation to you. So to get there, you just join the group and the link for the Zoom will be in there. The Sip and Craft is a, is a Zoom um, meeting. We don't have it in a group. We don't show it in a group. We actually do it zoom we have a good time we do crafting i answer questions where well, we ask the questions i say we all the time because to me ccbab is a family it's a we thing okay i might have started the group or whatever but it's a we thing if you're not already in this group you are missing out that comes to that brings me to the point of doing this video so a lot of people know me um a lot of you all are in my group. A lot of you all are on my personal page. So my personal and business, let me tell you right now, they completely separate because the business me is completely different from the, the personal me. So I hope y'all can separate that and I hope you don't hold it against me. But if you do, what the fuck ever, you know, it's just, it is what it is. My business, my business, my person, my person, but that ain't what I'm here to talk about. What I wanted to do, I do have a video here where I think I talked about myself or said something about myself. I didn't really let you know how, who I am. So I talked about this today on a live in CCBAB in the crafting group. And I thought I'd just show you these this video. Um, this is a video I did on my personal page um, maybe two or three years ago, I believe. It's been a, it's been a minute, maybe two or three years ago. Um, it talks about travel. I am a travel agent, but I want you to get to know me. I want you to get to know the real Stephanie, the down and dirty, the 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 grimy story. Listen, just listen to this. It's oh, probably about 30 or 40 minutes, but it's my story and it's telling you about me. You'll be surprised. Hey, also, um, things are coming up for YouTube. I got videos that I'm making now. Please leave comments if you want a video made. Let me know again. I'll try my best. I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I'm pretty damn good. I think I'm pretty damn good. Not perfect. Not the best. Not the worst. I'm somewhere in the middle. But I really, really enjoy helping. I enjoy doing these crafts. I enjoy when you come to my group and you show the craft that you made off my videos y'all that really oh my god that excites me yeah i'm an old woman i get excited quick but yes um it really excites me so i'm gonna let you all look at this video and i hope to see you at um sipping craft tonight if you have um free time about eight o'clock we usually go eight to ten we try to do it two hours but it usually end up midnight a little bit later, once everybody starts falling asleep, people come in and out. You don't have to stay the, so, the whole time. We just absolutely have a lot of fun. We do a lot of giveaways. We play a lot of games. But the most important thing is we fellowship with each other. It's a lot of things going on in this world. We all know what's going on, good, bad, and then different. We got a lot of stuff going on. And sometimes you just need to decompress. We laugh, we joke, we have fun. Just come and join it, join us. Also, here's the video. Y'all, I cry a lot in this video. I don't know if it'll make you cry. It makes me very, very emotional. But this is the real me. This telling a piece of my story. So that's what I'm going to do in 2021. Not that I'm going to make a lot of videos about myself. But I'm just going to be Stephanie, okay? So I hope you enjoy this. So, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time of day it is for you. I'm trying to get some light in here. I'm driving my car. It's, it's getting ready to rain, so it's very dark in here, and my phone battery is, is almost dead, so I can't turn on the light, but <coughs> either way, 
Either way, let's have a little talk, guys. So, um, this look kind of obscure, like I'm trying to be in the dark, but I'm really not. It's just not lighting here. Let's see if I can turn on another light. That still ain't doing no good, but <coughs> it's getting ready to pour down, right? Y'all see that light now? So I'm on my way to Win Dixie to pick up some collard greens to, for my daughter to cook. So, my name is Stephanie Robinson, and I am a human being. I know y'all thought I was going to say I am an independent travel agent, but that ain't what we're talking about today, okay? So, I wanted to tell my story because I feel like, um, I guess I feel like I need to tell my story. It's not a religious thing for me. Um, I am spiritual. I do believe I'm not the most religious person in the world. I try to do right by people so I can be treated right. I don't, you know, I'm not a mean person. Well, yeah, I probably am, but I'm a fair mean person. How about that? So what I wanted to talk about today for a couple of minutes, and the reason I pre-taped this because I don't want to do no live on this because my folks cry too much and I ain't got time to be crying. I got to get this out here before I start crying. So what I wanted to talk to you about, believe it or not, is drinking alcoholic beverages. Yes, this is Stephanie saying this. Guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say don't drink. I don't care about people drinking. If you're over 21, you can drink. I'm just going to tell you about me, okay? So, I went in the Army at 17. I probably started drinking. I was about 14 or 15 years old. Not drinking regularly. I'm not even trying to say that. But I started sipping. You know, you take the cup in the kitchen to uh, make a drink, you pour the drink for your parents and you get a little sip because you got to make sure it tastes right. And at the time, I didn't know what it was supposed to taste like, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, when in Army at 17, um, I was married at 18. Right after I went in the Army, I got married in November. I went in the Army in June, right after I graduated. So, all in all, did 23 years, did a lot of um, stuff, but the one thing that I did keep doing on a regular basis was drinking alcoholic beverages, okay? So, my story is going to be short. We ain't going to do no five-year thing, man. When this ain't even open, so I got to sit out here for a minute and talk to myself in my truck like a crazy lady, but... <clears throat> One of the things I did the whole time I was in the military, unless I was deployed or in the field or something like that, is a drink. Now, I started off as an occasional drinking. Drinker, is that what you call it? Occasional drinker. Um, guys, let me tell you something. I progress from an occasional drinker, listen to what I'm saying, to drinking on every occasion. So, I graduated to drinking on every occasion, okay? So, I'm sitting outside of Win dixie <laughs> It's pouring down rain and, and I'm 30 minutes early. But, <clears throat> what I was saying was, I went from occasional drinking, drinker to drinking every occasion. You see where I'm going with this? Guys, I was an alcoholic. So, I know this is a shocked to everybody that I'm saying this, but I say it a lot. I say it a lot. I haven't drank in over a year, guys. That That's the point. I haven't drank in over a year. Um, I drank for every occasion. I stopped working in 2017. I was at home every day. I started drinking every day. But let me take that back. I was drinking every day anyway. Um, I had got to the point, progress to the point where I would drink, 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 and people said go to sleep. Y'all, I wasn't asleep. 
I was passed out. But it was the running joke that y'all that's Steph. Don't wake her up, she'll be okay. You ain't gonna be able to wake her up. You ain't gonna be able to wake her up. So um I drank quite a bit. My last marriage, y'all know I always talk about that. I've been married about five, six, seven times. Actually, I've been married three, but my last marriage, when I married that husband, when I met him, he claimed he didn't drink. Well, he said he had stopped drinking, and um, he probably had. I don't have a problem with that, but it got to the point where both of us was raging alcoholics in the house. So, anyway, I'm not going to talk about him because that ain't what I'm here for, but I got divorced or whatever. I stopped working in 2017 because of my back. It was very painful for me to stand up, walk upstairs and everything. So, I stopped working. I um, got to the point where not only was I drinking every day, because at that point I had got progress to the point of drinking every day. Not only was I drinking every day, I was drinking all day long, okay? So... Those of you that know me, uh, if you know me, you probably saw me kind of drunk, tipsy, whatever. But one thing, a couple of things I didn't do, y'all. <clears throat> I know y'all think this is crazy. I didn't drink and drive. So I had all kind of drivers. Because for me, my thing was, even though I was an alcoholic, and I was a drunk alcoholic, whatever you want to call it, my heart wouldn't let me hurt nobody but myself. You feel me? You see what I'm saying? It wouldn't let me hurt nobody but myself, okay? So, my drinking was hurting myself, but I didn't I didn't get in the car and drink and drive because, hell, if I'm falling asleep, sitting in the chair, what the heck you think I'm going to do behind the wheel? So, I used to let everybody drive my car, my truck. Um, when we went out, somebody would drive my niece, my cousin, somebody. When I was here at the house and needed to go somewhere, I sent one of my kids. It was a good day when they got their license. But um, I progressed to the point of drinking every day, all day long. From wake up to pass out, that's what I say now. From wake up to pass out, people say from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep. So mine was from the time I wake up to the time I passed out. Get back up, brush my teeth, do whatever got to be done, and then get back at it, okay? So I was what you would call a functioning alcoholic. I know the running joke is, I ain't no alcoholic, I'm a drunk because I ain't go to them damn meetings. So if you want to say that I want an alcoholic, I was a drunk because I didn't go to no damn gone meetings. But <clears throat> I got to the point where I was drinking every day, all day long, guys. And if you know me, you know I was able to get alcohol, okay? There ain't no pad on the back or nothing. But I, you know, I have money. I'm not rich, but I have money and I was able to afford all this alcohol I was drinking. So, um, drinking every day from get up to pass out. So, in 2018, it's 2019, guys, by the way. In 2018, it was in the end of January. I don't even know the date, guys. This Here, here go the thing. I don't know the date because I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. But anyway, in late January of 2018, I woke up after one of them drunks. Y'all, I'm sick as a dog. You heard me? Ain't that what they say? You heard me? I was sick as, man, I felt so bad. Let me tell you how bad I felt. I would go in the bathroom. This is how bad I was feeling. I ain't know if I wanted to sit on the toilet or throw up in the toilet. Guys, that's how drunk I was. Um... It wasn't a special occasion. Of course, I told you I went from drinking on special occasion to drinking every occasion, you know. It's raining. Let's have a drink. That TV commercial came on. Let's have a drink. And I'm saying this, but it was me. I was drinking by myself. That's a sign when you drink excessively by yourself. But anyway, I had got really, really drunk the night before, evidently. 
I woke up, I was sick. Oh my God, I was so sick. I did the same thing. Lord, Lord, if I get through this, I promise I ain't doing this crap no more. Um, I didn't write it down in a calendar. I didn't memorialize it by um, anything. I had a half a gallon of uh, Seagulls Gin. That was my point, uh, my um, drink at that point, guys. Uh, not Seagulls, I'm sorry. Smirnoff. <laughs> I'm talking about Seagulls. Smirnoff Vodka. Um, I had got to the point where I was drinking that straight. No chaser. With two ice cubes. Because I didn't want that much water to fill in it. Because I wanted to drink it and I want to get the full effect. But um, I woke up. I woke up. I was sick. I was, Lord, if I get through this, if I get through this, if I get through this, you hear me. Y'all, I got through it. I left a uh, half a gallon of Smirnoff on that cabinet. I didn't write down a date or anything because I didn't know, you know, it wasn't really a, a, a something I planned, a conscious effort to stop drinking. It was more of a same thing most people do, man. If I get out of this mess right here, ain't, you ain't got to worry about me no more. There was one of them deals, so I didn't drink that day. And I was like, shoot, I can do this. So the next day, I didn't drink. I'm like, okay, I'm feeling okay. I ain't, I ain't really got to do that. Y'all, that night, that second day, that night, I started sweating. It was cold sweats, y'all. Um... I keep my house warm in the winter and cool in the summer, so it wasn't no reason for me to have cold sweats because it was warm in my house. But I, I had cold sweats, y'all. I started shaking. I just felt horrible. I had felt good for them two days that I had not drank anything, but that second night, I went to bed. I woke up in the middle of the night. I was soaking wet. I'm talking about soaking like everybody know I sweat when I keep saying everybody people that know me know I sweat I'm a sweater but that night I was paying sweat to her. you hear me I was dripping wet my bed was wet my sheets were wet my hair was soaked these dreads you know they weren't that long they were probably about that long then <laughs> but these dreads was soaking wet y'all I was going through withdrawals. Here I am going through withdrawals, DDT or whatever, DDTs or whatever it is. I'm going through that and I ain't even told myself that I had a problem at that point. I hadn't told myself I had a problem. I knew I drank too much, but that was about it. In my mind, I drank too much, but hell, I was okay. But guys, when you wake up so drunk, I don't even know if I was drunk or so, such a bad hangover. I was scared that day that I would sit on the toilet and lose my liver. That's how bad it was. But that second night, guys, I, I was sweating. I started shaking. I felt horrible. After two days of not drinking, feeling okay, that second night, I felt horrible. I got up. I started throwing up. Gut-wrenching. I mean, pulling from the gut, you know how you get, uh, and don't nothing come up because you done threw up so bad. I did that. I was drinking so much before that, but I, my stomach was hurting. I was cramping. I had dry heaves. Um, I was sweating. Then I get hot. Then I get cold. I was going through withdrawals is my point, y'all. I went through that. that. That happened for about maybe two or three weeks. I know y'all was going to say a day or two. No, guys, two or three weeks. I didn't tell nobody. You know, now I realize that I did that wrong. I don't want nobody to do that because now I realize after reading up on it, you could actually die going through alcohol withdrawals or whatever. I didn't know that. So I probably was at the point 
of um, the day before when I was really drunk, probably right at alcohol pause. I probably would have killed myself if I wouldn't have passed out. But anyway, um, about two weeks, two and a half weeks, I was sick. But when I got in front of my kids or whatever, I straightened up. My boyfriend, I was okay. Just be like, man, I don't feel good. I'm finna go to bed. Not telling them what was really going on with me because I don't know if, I'm not going to say I didn't realize it. I didn't realize the magnitude of what I was doing. My body was coming off a basic, maybe a 10-year straight drunk and over 30 years of drinking. But let me tell you about me when I was drinking, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a pause because when this has opened up, let me go and get my collard greens and I will be back. <clears throat> okay, so... I'm back from out of Wendy's and I want to get this off of my chest assist by the time I get home. You know what? Can't even barely move. My daughter been driving my truck. She's short as heck. So, we was at this point. We was at this point where I was going through DDTs or whatever you call it, guys. I could have died. That, that's how bad it was. So, even though I did the Lord, 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 if I get through this, I get through this. I didn't really think I was going to get through it. I just thought I was going to go three, four days without drinking then. This in my mind. Then I was just going to slow down. I wasn't going to drink from sun up to pass out. I was going to drink from maybe... Um, noon time to pass out or whatever because believe me I was drinking at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning whatever time I woke up I get up, do what I gotta do and then I start drinking <clears throat> okay I don't wanna cry but um, guys when I say I felt like I thought that hangover was bad or whatever it was I was going through alcohol parts or whatever that getting that alcohol out of my system, I don't know if it was out, but for two weeks, I would lay in my bed at night and cry. My body would ache. My stomach would cramp. I got cold sweats. I got, um, I was shaking. I had all kind of stuff going on with me, but I got through it, y'all, but I wouldn't advise nobody to do that, because as I looked into it afterwards, I could have killed, I mean, I could have died going through that without medical supervision, but um, I got through it, and I haven't drank since then is the point. I ain't had nothing to drink. I still party, because I guess some people feel like going out or whatever with people, you know, you want to have a social drink, but y'all, I had got past social, I couldn't be social without a drink, you know, um, I was sick, I know I'm all over the place, I'm trying to get my point across because I've been thinking about this for a while, and I'm not, again, as I started, I'm not a deeply religious person, I believe. I go to church, not every Sunday, but I've been baptized. Of course, I didn't get baptized until I was 42, I believe I was. I got baptized after I retired out of the military, but um, it just, lately I've been looking, feeling like, you know, the people that are close to me, I tell them, you know, how I used to be drinking and stuff, and the people that have met me since I stopped drinking don't believe it because I don't drink at all. Um, excuse me. I'm right around the corner. It's raining. I got to get off the phone. I'm right around the corner. I'm right around the corner. I'll be. I'm pulling up now. Yes, Jasmine. I'm doing. Uh, listen, I got to get off the phone. 
Uh, okay. So, I'm sorry about that, y'all. She's going to be mad at me because she's going to think I don't want to speak to her. But I wanted to get this out before I get to the house. I'm right around the corner. But I had um, been thinking about this for a while. And it wasn't like, it's not no, like a prophecy. I got to tell somebody. And I only, that ain't me. I ain't there. That ain't me. I ain't there. Um, it just, I felt like it was for somebody, guys. I don't know who it was for, but what I wanted to say is, I would never, ever blame anyone for my drinking, because I did that myself. Ain't nobody forced me to drink. I ain't had no peer pressure. I'm a different kind of person. I don't even do peer pressure. I don't give a damn what nobody doing around me. I'm going to do what I think is right. Or if I'm going to do wrong, I know I'm doing wrong. So I don't even do peer pressure. Um, I drink because I actually like to drink. And I like to be drunk, to tell the truth. But um, I started drinking so much. But I stopped and I almost died was my point. But here go another point. I would never blame anybody for my drinking because I drank on my own. I was over 21. I can go get liquor when I want to call somebody and tell them to go. But nobody actually ever said, except boyfriends, and I should have listened to them. They wanted shit else for me, but that might have been the, um, the back in my head that was telling me you know a lot of my boyfriends told me girl you drink too much you're an alcoholic you need to stop drinking but i'm like well whatever here go the thing i drank a lot i ain't never been late to work for drinking i ain't never missed work from drinking i, I already told you i didn't drink and drive so i was functional i can control myself in situations I was professional. I had professional jobs. You know, I was in the military. After I got out of the military, I had professional corporate jobs. Um, making good money. I ain't never mess up nothing because of drinking. I ain't miss no appointments because I guess I drank so much I knew what to do. I paid all my bills. My bills went late. I didn't stop um, paying for stuff because I spent it on alcohol. I didn't get to that point. But I did get to the point of almost killing myself. Um, what I'm trying to say is, and this probably message is probably for me. I said it was for somebody else, but now that I think of it, it's probably for me. But I'm sharing my message with you. Um, again, I won't blame nobody, but I do think sometimes we make people comfortable in their addictions. Um, what I'm saying is, uh, that's just there. Man, she'll be okay. That's just there. Let me tell you, I done fell asleep at the Elks in Anniston. I fell asleep at that, um, uh, it's a club in Anniston. And I'm from Anniston. Those of you that's listening, looking, don't know. I'm from Anniston, Alabama. So, Jeffro had this club on Noble Street. It was across the street from the class of the close to the class of on the outside is where you smoke. <coughs> we went down my class reunion um, weekend. I think it was the 25th class, or 20th, it might have been 20th. I came outside to smoke, y'all. I fell asleep in that chair. I believe I was in that chair the whole night my class was in that party. So, my class of 88, um, they good people cause I didn't see my picture on the internet or nothing like that. I guess they didn't think about it because right now, you know, we quick with the draw. <laughs> we are embarrassed. I'm about to, I fell asleep there. I fell asleep at the Elks one night. Then I woke up and couldn't find my keys. And we looked, me and Gerald Tillman and my sister looked for them keys for, I, it had to be an hour. And I think they ended up being in my pocket or some crap. But, um, I was out of control. I was in control, out of control, if that makes sense. <coughs> we make people comfortable in their addiction. Um, I know people that probably said something. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. That pollen got me, and now we're finna have another tornado. But 
I know people probably have said something to me about drinking or whatever, and I kind of blew them off, and they probably <coughs> kind of <coughs> didn't say anything after that. And I'm sure they looked at me and was like, damn, that girl drinks so much. Because guys, guys and girls, I was in the military, and it's a lot of guys, you know, I parted with, with a lot of folks or whatever. You know, military is a very close family. It's not gender divided. It's not racial divided. We, you know, for the most part, of course, it's some bad people in the army. Everything outside the gate is still inside the gate. But for the most part, um, we didn't divide by gender. We didn't divide by race. You know, we was all a family. So... We used to have these parties or whatever. My house has always been a party house. Still is, by the way. Even though I don't drink, we still have a good time over here. People can still drink at my house. But, man, I done been with guys that claim they can un out drink me. I drink their ass under the table. Do you hear me? It ain't nothing to brag about. I'm just telling you the truth. I would drink their butt up. I ain't met nobody who could out drink me. Being comfortable in my addiction probably led me to drinking a lot more. Nobody's fault but Stephanie Ann, Slater, Latimer, Hawkins, Robinson. Yeah, I've been married that many times. I made myself drink. I drank on my own, but I just feel like sometimes we make people comfortable in their addiction. I won't even say you, um, what do they say? You enabling them? You're not in, you're making them comfortable. That's what I like to say. I'm not enabling them unless I enable them by pouring it down their throat. I don't need, and didn't nobody enable me. Even the people that made drinks from me for me didn't 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 enable me because I could have took the drink and set it to the side. I was comfortable in my addiction. People made me comfortable in my addiction. I made myself comfortable in my addiction. Um, that one hangover got me. That's how professional I was at my drinking, y'all. I didn't have hangovers. I would drink damn near half a gallon of um, Smirnoff vodka a day straight and wake up. I feel kind of whatever. But once I brushed my teeth, for some reason, once I brushed my teeth, I was fine. <laughs> so I made myself comfortable. People made me comfortable in my addiction. So my point with this is letting people know my story of course it's a little bit deeper if you want to hear about it i'll tell you about it you might be bored but um i don't think we should make people comfortable in their addiction i don't say bug people because i think if you grown you can drink ain't nothing wrong with it hell smoke weed whatever you do it's on you you have to suffer the consequences my consequences was i almost damn died trying to get this alcohol out of my system because I was too embarrassed to tell somebody, look, I'm going through this thing because I stopped drinking. I might need to be in somebody's hospital. I might need to be in somebody's rehab. Uh, it's hard for me because I could have died at the end. What if my kids would have came in there? They wouldn't do what was going on, but thankfully I got through that and I'm fine now, but I ain't going to let you be comfortable around me. I don't care if you drink. That don't bother me. I'm going to sit up there with you. But I do. I will tell you if I think I'm drinking too much. And you can tell me to go to hell. And damn it, I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to get on out your face. But I want you to know that um, I ain't going to do that. If I can do it, you can do it. People say that shit all the time. Stuff they can do, I can't do. But I know that I did it. And I know that um, I didn't do it wrong. I can't stress that enough. I did it absolutely wrong. I could have killed myself. I did it absolutely wrong. I ain't had no side effects of that. You know, I went to the doctor afterwards. Found out I had diabetes. I didn't eat candy, so guess where the diabetes probably came from? Besides, it's a family thing. Um, in my family, a lot of, um, not a lot of people, some of my family has diabetes, but guess guess what? There's so much freaking um, sugar and alcohol. I believe that's why that man told me I had diabetes. My um, 
A1C, when I went, I went in February. I remember I stopped drinking the end of um, January. I went in the end of February. Before a regular checkup is when I found out I had diabetes. My A1C was 9.6. My glucose was 227. Um, my A1C shouldn't have been over 6. Glucose, he told me about 110 would have been okay, but I was at 220. I was double that. That's because of that sugar, because I didn't eat candy. I'd eat the hell out of candy now, but I didn't eat candy. I didn't drink sodas. I still don't drink sodas, uh, tea occasionally. So my diabetes was exacerbated by, exacerbated, whatever it is, exacerbated, that's it. It was ramped up by my drinking. So I think it was a equivalent to me taking a bag of, sugar and pouring it down my throat that's how much sugar i was getting i just wanted to say that if i say something to you it's because i love you i'm not one of them people that's gonna bug you i'm not one of these people gonna down you um because that's just not me I just wanted to tell my story. I thought it was somebody, for somebody, that one of them, I got a premonition, I got to tell somebody, I thought it was some for somebody, but I think it's for me. Let me, um, let me go in the house right quick. Okay, I guess this part three, and this will be the final part, I had to go take the um, grocery in the house, but anyway. I had got so comfortable in my addiction. I don't know where I was at, so let me say this. I had got so comfortable in my addiction. I don't want to ever go there anymore. I haven't drank. Um, I still hang out. I give me a solo cup with my double ward. Hold the ice sometime, man. I be getting it in. I hold the ice. But, um... <clears throat> Y'all, um... I said earlier, I never drink and drive. I never, I ain't do that. So I let people drive me. Um, I feel like it's people out there drinking and driving. I told you, I didn't want to hurt nobody. If I was hurting somebody, I only wanted to hurt myself. Okay. Um, when you think about it, and I think about it now with a clear mind and looking back, even though I thought I was hurting myself only and I wasn't bothering nobody, I was hurting my kids. Because, man, when I tell y'all, I used to be toasted. My kids, kids never went without. I'm not saying that. They never went without. You know, I would cook. I, I would clean, pay bills, all that. But um, I did hurt them because... Even though they probably laugh and joke, it's kind of embarrassing to have your mama... In the middle of a party, sitting in a chair. And baby, I used to tear the roof off. You heard me? I done woke myself up plenty of times snoring. Not that the drinking was uh, making me snore, because I still snore. But it was making it worse, boy. I sound like a damn um, bear and a freight train meat. I know I was embarrassing for my kids. Um... As I look back, it's embarrassing for me, too. Looking back, it is embarrassing. Because when I look back and see some of the stuff I did, or, let me tell you this, I don't judge, but when I see somebody toasted, not, not drunk, when I see somebody toasted, I judge myself because I don't judge them. I, that, ain't my, that ain't my lot in life. I tell you how I feel about you. I ain't judging you. I'm telling you how I feel. But I judge myself because I look at it and then I say, but for my strength, my willpower, that would be me. That was me. I was that one in the corner. Now, I say all the time I was a professional drinker. Not drinker, drinker. I was a professional drinker. I didn't do that throwing up. I didn't do them hangovers. 
Remember, that's what made me stop drinking because I had a terrible hangover. Now I realized that I was at the point of killing myself because I was at the point of alcohol poison. I've um I've came to that point. I was at the point of alcohol poison. Um, the message probably for me, and this probably ain't how I wanted to present it, but this how it came out. <laughs> I know about drinking. I know the effects. Somebody that drinking and driving right now. Um, I ain't trying to be wrapped around your car. I don't want your car wrapped around me. Um, I don't even know what else to say, but... I notice it in some people around me now that I ain't never thought were drinkers. And now, all I see is alcohol that they post. My kids drink. They don't drink yet. I'm constantly on their ass about their drinking cause. Well, J-Lo don't drink. She might take a sip here and sip there, but that was because she had her one drunk at 21, and it kind of messed her up. So, uh, she iffy about that. Not saying she won't go to drinking, but I don't want to ever go down that road again. I can't say I never drink. I know right now I don't have no taste for alcohol. I don't want to drink. If you come to my house, I have a full-size bar downstairs. One that's built into the wall with the sink, the bar, the thing in the back. Look out a, a little club down there. I keep it stocked with alcohol. You heard me? So I might be making p people comfortable in their addiction too, but I like the bottles. I actually buy alcohol for the bottles now, the way they look, but... Um, that's my story. I don't know who it's for, but it's somebody that you can, um, uh, I'm playing with my kids because I'm, I'm trying to get myself together for going to house. This chick got me cooking these collard greens. She was going to cook them, but I'm going to end up cooking them because I got to put them in the pressure cooker and she don't know how to do it. But... If you want to stop drinking or whatever, and this ain't even what this started out to be. I ain't even had this plan. I don't even know what the plan was. I just started talking because y'all know I like to stay on camera. Um, and I didn't do it on live because I didn't want, I knew I'd probably cry. I didn't want people crying with me to keep me crying. But that's my story. People don't know it. People that just met me say, uh, you know, I'm a travel agent now. I have a little bit of a following, and we do a lot of games and giveaways. Some of the ladies and the guys that I talk to online, I never even met in person. But I'm like, hey, friend, what's up, sis? That my bro. I feel like that is not worse than me. I tell people all the time, I feel sorry for them people that say, uh... What y'all say? I ain't got that many friends. I got a lot of acquaintances. Uh, I got a lot of just people I be around. They my for you. I feel sorry for you, baby, because I got a lot of friends. At this point in my life, I'm almost 50. If I'm dealing with you and you just an acquaintance, I don't even, I don't have time for you. So, I have a lot of friends. I count a lot of people as my friends. I don't know if they count me as their friend, but I count a lot of people as my friends. I say that all the time. I have so many friends, baby. I couldn't take your hand, my hand, and everybody in this town hand and count them up. I have friends when I'm a, I'm a genuine person. I know I'm mean. A lot of people tell me I'm mean. I know I'm mean. Not me. I'm, I'm not even going to say that. I'm straightforward and I'm honest. I'll say some stuff in a heartbeat. And I tell uh, Tanya all the time, I say, girl, I say the stuff you want to say. Because she laugh at me all the time. I say the stuff you want to say. I'm one of them kind of people that I'm going to say it. And um, I'm just going to say it. If I feel it, I'm going to say it. If I feel it, it's coming out. I have grown old enough to temper what I say. I kind of say it in a in a better way. 
Because usually I walk up, and, you know, and I be like, nah, that effed up. What you done? You know, everybody else sitting in the room looking at somebody do something effed up. I'm going to say something. Um, as I get older, it's going to get worse. You know, I'm ready to get to that 85-year-old woman um, that can say anything she wants to because she old. So I feel like that now. <laughs> uh I'm going to close this out. I don't know what I what I was trying to say. I don't know who I was trying to say it to. I don't know if I was just trying to let you know how I am or what I do or what I did. But I do know that somebody, somebody that's close to somebody that's close to me, I don't even feel like it's a direct connection. I don't feel like it's somebody I can put my hand on. But I feel like it's somebody that I'm close to can put their hand on the person that need to know that, you know, you might need to seek some help. And I say seek help because I wouldn't advise nobody that drank as much as I used to drink to do what I did. It was a blessing that I made it out of there and my kids didn't come in that room and I was sprawled out dead or near death because again, as I read up on this months and months later, what I was feeling on that second night was severe withdrawals. Like when you go through a like when you go through a drug program, they give you that um methadone. That's drugs too, but you can't just rip it out of your system because your system has become dependent on it or whatever. That's the same way with alcohol when you get to the point where I was. And when I say I was at that point, guys, I promise you, it ain't, I know I'm smiling. It ain't nothing to brag. I'm not smiling because I, I was drinking. I'm smiling because I made it through. And I'm okay. I, I stopped drinking. I could have died. Um, just don't be scared. If somebody's your friend. Or uh, whatever. And you say something to them. And they you can't make nobody do what you say. But just let them know you care. And dang it. I realize now you drinking too goddamn much or whatever. And if they keep drinking, you did your part. What I'm saying is don't make them comfortable. And if it gets so bad, y'all don't be getting no cars with no damn trunks. You don't need to add your drunk ass to the road. There's already drunk asses out there. I just feel like somebody close to somebody close to me. It's going to make a badass mistake. They're going to make a badass mistake. And I don't want to be in the middle of their mistake. So I felt like I had to say something. And if it ain't for you, it ain't for you. And hell, like I said, it's probably for me. I probably just need to tell my story. Because my story is a good story. Because y'all know I'm crazy about myself. I love myself to death. Y'all know that. But at that time, on guess, I always said I love myself. At that time, on guess, I love myself. I was killing myself. Killing myself, y'all. Uh, I'm not no psychic. I don't get premonitions. I don't think I'm uh, no saint. Matter of fact, I know I ain't no saint, but just I felt like I had to say something, and maybe somebody will see this. Uh, somebody did talk to me about drinking, because they know I used to drink a lot, and was like, girl, how you stopped it? You just stopped. Yeah, I had a little bit of willpower, but mostly it was because I didn't want to feel drunk that day. <laughs> Honestly, that's what it was. I didn't want to feel drunk that day, but once I stopped, I didn't. I don't have no desire to start. But I don't have no desire for alcohol right now. I don't know if I have a desire for alcohol in a couple of weeks or hell tomorrow. I just know right now I'm taking it one day at a time, and I just don't have a taste for alcohol. I don't. 
That's why I don't know why I used to drink it, cause it stank. Now when my um when my boyfriend talked to me after he done had a drink, I'd be like, God. Now that's what I wanted to say. I think that's why I started this. Man, those of you that know me, let me put my light back on, cause it's thunderstorming. Let me see. There we go. Here, let me see if I can turn this around, get some light. Ah. Those of you that know me, man, why y'all ain't tell my breath was smelling like that and that I was acting like that? Y'all should have told me that. I thought I was cool. <laughs> I'm going to go on in the house and do these greens. I know this problem. I'm going to put these videos together. There's three videos. I'm going to merge them. I ain't even going to look at them. They probably don't make no sense. And I'm going to apologize to you now because they probably don't make no sense. Because I'm going to merge them and then I'm just going to put them on Facebook because y'all know that's what I do. I put stuff on Facebook. Not everything, but a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to put it together and put it on Facebook. This ain't my um um coming out to say I'm trying to say nobody. or I, I just It just finally hit me. Even if somebody gets something from this, this message was for me. I needed to voice it. I needed to say it. Y'all, I'm happy. I know I've been crying for the last couple of minutes, but I'm a happy person now. I'm still lazy as hell. I still don't go that you know, I don't go too much unless I'm going out of town on a trip because I'm a what travel agent, but I'm still an at home body. But now I can sit in my house every day, all day long and don't drink. <laughs> drank y'all I was past drinking I was drinking um those of you that didn't know this story now y'all know I ain't perfect <laughs> I know y'all thought I was perfect you know perfect no I'm just playing but you know we all got our issues or whatever I just know I had a bad one that could have killed me and God forbid, if I'd have took this and got behind the wheel, I could have killed somebody. That's why I wasn't drinking and driving. I probably would have killed somebody because I told you I used to drink from sun up to pass out. Not sun down, from sun up to pass out. So, um, I, I'm glad that I wasn't doing this. I'm glad. Thankful. Um that I stopped drinking. I guess I kind of maybe thought drinking made me fun, but damn it, I'm still fun, and I ain't drinking over a year. So I'm still fun. People still have fun with me. So yeah, I can do it without the alcohol. And I wasn't blaming it on the alcohol, y'all. I was blaming it all on Stephanie and Slater, Latimer, Hawkins Robinson. I blamed it all on me. So I'm gonna go on here and get these greens up in the um in this pressure cooker so these girls can eat and get their butt back there loud before it storm out. And this is Stephanie and I'm out. And y'all let me know how y'all felt about this. It ain't no um awakening, discover, whatever. I guess I just felt like talking as you as usual. I like to talk and I like to I be I like to be on live, but I didn't think I can do this little talk on live because I didn't want to be doing all that crying. So, I'm, I still got glass eyes. Um, Bye-bye, everybody. Talk to you later. So, yeah, that's part of my story. And, um, wow, that's been three or four years ago that I made the video. I put it in my group last year in May. I put it in CCBAB. Um, you know it's been a while ago. You know, the bridge was up here. Now they down the back or whatever. But it, it's been a while. Yeah, I had to show my dreads. Y'all know, y'all know I had to get that in now. But I just wanted you all to know a little bit about me. Yeah, it's not a good thing, but it is my story. I um felt that day that it was for somebody it probably was for me and again today it might be for me um no i don't have a taste for alcohol i still don't want to drink i'm still around people that drink but that's just me um that's how i am 
I'm still a jokester. I still like to have fun. I'm not partying now because uh, COVID shit. You can't go nowhere. But we still have um, fun at the house. I have my daughters come. I have a daughter in Atlanta, Jasmine, my oldest daughter. She's 25 to be 26. She works at the airport. Jayla, she's 23. She stays here for me, with me. And she works in Auburn at a warehouse. Cheek Soul is the name of it. It's a um, clothing warehouse. It's an online boutique. Um, yeah, both of them suckers still drink too. Lord have mercy. But I hope you all, I hope this gave you a little insight into me. Now, other than that, I still do um, travel agency. I still have a travel agency, so if you want to travel, go ahead and drop something down there and let me know, and I'll get in touch with you. But this channel is for crafting, so hope to see you tonight at the Sip and Craft, and I hope you got to know me a little better. Bye-bye.